Hello three concurrent viewers, thank you for coming so quickly. I actually don't know if I've... Okay, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this quite a few times, but I can't find any record of it on my streams. So I should say it again more clearly, more briefly, more succinctly. Certainly more succinctly than this video on blogging theology with Lue Fatui, that is just over one hour and 47 minutes. Now I thought I was very clever when I worked out what the Quran was all about as regards denying the crucifixion of Jesus. We know that the historicity of Jesus is in dispute. Fatui mentions the Talmud talking about some people that could have been Jesus and his apostles, but um, you know the, the the penalty was wrong. It was stoning rather than crucifixion. Um, it sounds like it could be Jesus, and but the names are all wrong. So that part of the story is murky. The Jews are known for writing everything down, but they, they basically haven't got any, any record of anyone called Jesus who was known to have been crucified in that way. Um, no record at all. Um, Josephus was a Jew, but he was... He has been said to be a little unreliable because he worked for the Romans and there has been a theory that the Romans were the ones who created the New Testament. So nobody is really sure about the provenance of the New Testament and this should give us pause in swallowing the whole story hook line and sinker, in particular when the story is so absurd. Now the most interesting thing about the Quranic version of Jesus was that in verse, um, let me just find you the verse, Is chapter chapter nineteen and chapter three. I mean, sorry, I'll, I'll find it. I'll find the verse when it actually says that Jesus did not, in fact, die on the cross. Sorry about this. I, I have been here before, but I should know it off by heart. But I don't. Anyway, we know that the Quran accepts the virgin birth and denies the divinity of Jesus. So he was not crucified, but saved by God, whatever that means, whatever that means. So it, it's chapter 4, verse 157, that actually says that. So 
So I'll just quote it for you. And for their saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who differ over it are in, in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption. And they did not kill him for certain. So that's stated quite definitely. Chapter 4. Verse 157, that, that chapter on women. So what's so important about this verse is how it affects Christians. And this would be a very good way of Muslims pushing their dawah on Christians because Christians would say, no, no, but he... We deny your denial. We believe that Jesus did die on the cross. And Muslims can say, aha, but we, we know you want to believe that Jesus died on the cross. And we know you want Jesus to die on the cross in order that this human sacrifice have t had, uh, took place in order that you be saved from your sins. So whatever you say about loving Jesus, you in fact want him to have died in order that your sins will be redeemed. So it is Christian hypocrisy of the highest order when Christians say they love Jesus when really they want Jesus to have died horribly on the cross to save them from their sins. That is the Christian belief. Now, Islam, the Quran offers them an alternative version, which is to say that they can still get to heaven, anyone who wants to adopt the narrative of the Quran can still get to heaven without being guilty of idolatry and blasphemy. We know Christianity is idolatry because we know it. Christians are supposed to worship a man convicted of blasphemy and the worship of anything that isn't God is idolatry. But if you talk to Christians, they will say they, they want well, they won't say they want Jesus to have died horribly, but they'll just, you know, deny the Quran. Um, but but they know that they, you know, their their narrative is that Jesus died for their sins. So if Jesus didn't die, then their sins will not be redeemed, and this means they will go to hell. But they could choose the alternative of becoming Muslim, but they won't. Or will they? We don't know. But, you know, it's up to Muslims to, to put it to them that if they really did believe in God and really love Jesus, they should be delighted with this happy ending offered by the Quran in chapter 4, verse 157, which means that they can be happy that Jesus didn't die horribly after all and be given the good news that they don't have to practice idolatry and blasphemy in order to get to heaven. But will they accept this offer? Probably not. Because of the hatred in their hearts for Muslims. And it would be baseless hatred because really their objections as Christians have, have all been dealt with, you know, the Quran already says that it accepts the virgin birth, um, it accepts the prophethood of Jesus, it just doesn't accept that Jesus is divine. But if you were to worship Jesus as a divinity, then you would be guilty of idolatry. So the Quran stops you from doing that. And so the Christian is 
put in an in an incoherent position of on the one hand saying that he loves Jesus and on the other hand requiring him to die for their sins. And this is the weak point that Muslims should keep putting to Christians until until they, you know, what will they do? They'll say, well, we never believe in that crap anyway, but we're certainly not converting to Islam. Or what will they say? Well, you know, we don't know. We, we don't really know what Christians believe because it's mostly nonsense. They only pretend to believe so that they don't have to be Muslim, I guess. And they don't want to be Muslim because their innate chauvinism and racism makes them reject Islam. Hello, Assad. The freak is determined to hold on to the Christian narrative. What, what's in Surah 78? I don't know what you mean, to free, but obviously he's upset. He's, he's Christian and he's upset at the alternative view of the Quran. Okay, chapter 4, verse 158. So, what, um, Allah raised Jesus up unto himself. So, what does this mean? It, you know, just, it sounds like, you know, a, something, raising something. Okay, I mean, a, a good example would be a child being picked up by a parent. So what do you think is the significance of that? Okay, that is um, a pleasing number of comments on theology in the in the chat. Okay, the freak <laughs> has this curious view that Muhammad was in fact Christian. That Muslims have the view that all the prophets of God are, in fact, Muslim. But it doesn't matter. I don't, you know, all, all these competing narratives are really a side issue. The issue is really what laws we should, we should live by. 
and of course it is the Quranic narrative that is the most believable and coherent. And now the freak wants me to read chapter 78 verse 2. And the title is called The Great News. About the great news. Hmm. It's strange how people focus on different different verses. You know, I, I really I don't care about the narrative at all. I'm just interested in the laws. And um it, it it seems to torture quite a few people, you know, about what actually happened and it's like who cares? We don't know, we can never know, and if we have to choose a version, we should choose the one that is most authoritative and most believable. And the most authoritative version would be in the Quran, because the Quran is supposed to be the word of God. And now Defree quotes John chapter 8, verse 31. And the thing is, John is only a man, so the word of God always trumps the word of mortal and fallible men. And in any case, we will never know. We can only choose which laws we want to live by, and if you don't really care, then, well, why, why should we ask you anything? You, you believe what the hell you like. The rest of us want to live under a moral system that supports the laws we have because we want our laws to be sensible and rational and fair. So I don't really know what the freak's position is. It's obviously an unusual one and something that um, he hasn't really explained. On the one hand, Oh, I don't even know. But anyway, you know, we get a lot of religious nutters in these circles, I guess, or, or you know, people who just hate the Abrahamic God. I don't think the the idea of the Abrahamic God should be dismissed simply because a lot of people want to believe in him. And it's not that hard to work out that Christianity is idolatry and blasphemy and therefore should be rejected, particularly when the New Testament is really a very insufficient source for our laws. So only chauvinism and hatred prevents Western man now without a functioning moral system to adopt the obvious rational and moral choice. I suppose it is difficult for him to acknowledge that he has been duped for 2,000 years into believing this absurd narrative that Jesus could have created the universe. but. The nature of totalitarian government by their absolute monarchs made it easy to enforce belief because we know that heretics were routinely burnt at the stake. We know that most people were illiterate and priests basically did what they liked. They told the king what they wanted to tell him and at first European monarchs were, well, they were barbarians. They couldn't read, they couldn't write, they didn't know anything. And it was only after a few generations that 
most kings, you know, were, you know, learned how to read and write and were, you know, more literate than, than their ancestors were. And when they became literate, they, they began to question the system. It's inevitable. So the difference really between Christianity and Islam in the way that it is administered is that under Islam, people would become literate. They would be encouraged to be literate because they're supposed to recite from the Quran and um, and, and people would want to refer to it because it's a book of rules. But the New Testament is no such thing. It, it's just full of ridiculous stories that, you know, frankly, are just are nowhere as good as the stories in the Old Testament. They're basically unbelievable and well, ridiculous. So the difficulty for Western man is is coming to terms with the fact that. For, for all these centuries, he has been duped by his government, by his, by his church, into believing what is in fact absurd and, and, you know, and all kinds of stratagems adopted to, to stop him from questioning what he really was supposed to have believed in. Um, it's different with Islam, you know, because it's easy to believe that, you know, it has strength and simplicity. You know, God is one. If there was a creation, then there must have been a creator. And we believe that the, that creator was God who revealed the Torah to the Jews and the Quran to Gentiles. It's easy to say, easy to understand, easy to repeat, unlike the Nicene Creed and those who are attached to to these things are merely being sentimental, being, dare I say, chauvinistic, and refusing to acknowledge that, yes, we, we can all be victims of contracts, cosmic frauds, but we should be grateful that something better is already here, unlike the Romans. The Romans didn't have the option of adopting Islam, but we can easily imagine that Constantine the Great would have grabbed the Quran with both hands if it had been available to him. He had to take a lot of trouble to, to prepare what was in fact a, a half-baked religion. So he had to fully bake it at the Council of Nicaea in the year 325, he had to call all the bishops to Nicaea to get them to agree a doctrine so he could use it to be the new imperial religion. And he needed to do that because the old imperial religion had failed. And we know that to be the case because there was a year of the five emperors when, uh, well, all these emperors were fighting each other. All these all lords, I suppose, were fighting each other to become emperor. And this is something for Western man to consider. I suppose, you know, the shame of it is, is terrible, you know, to, to be, to suddenly realise that this cosmic fraud has been perpetuated on you and your ancestors for 2,000 years. But I suppose if God exists, he could have a sense of humour. He could be testing your understanding of the principles that he has laid down in his laws. And it seems everybody has been lacking. Jews and Muslims don't follow their principles because, well, I don't know. Some people just don't have joined up thinking. They can hold two contradictory ideas in their heads at the same time. And 
some people like me can understand and apply principles and spot inconsistencies within them. So what do I advise? Really, just, just to come to terms with, you know, your own history. I mean, there's a lot to come to terms with, the American Revolution, the French and the Russian Revolutions too, were rejections of Christianity and monarchy. And if you understand that, then everything will become clear. So it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, a good example would be, I suppose, you're driving a car and it suddenly, I don't know, the engine starts to rattle and then, you know, maybe the tyres punctured, it ran over a nail, you know, maybe the engine's gone too and, and eventually, you know, your car comes to a stop and it won't go anymore. And that's all it is and you know you, you have a better religion that really the founding fathers were hinting would be the best one for for Americans because of the White House Quran, the existence of the White House Quran. Not something I made up. Look, all sorts of clues in the American Republic about how much they valued the Quran. And it's a shame that so many Americans don't really understand their history or don't care to understand their history or, or, or seem to be saying that there's something you know, wicked about um, their founding fathers being Masons. I think the true purpose of Masonry is to allow Jews and Muslims to tell Christians that their religion is idolatry and blasphemy when it became safe to do so and that, that will be their purpose really. And it will be a great relief because that, that just explains everything that went, that's been going wrong. The, because if everything that went wrong Everything that Western governments did wrong was, for, well, you would know it was wrong if you knew the Quran. So the First World War was wrong, the Second World War was wrong. There are all sorts of things that Western governments could have done to, to mitigate it, the, the consequences of both wars, but they didn't do it. But it's not too late, is it? The freak is going crazy. All right, I think I've said all I wanted to say in the 30 minutes. The freak is focusing on the on the particular form of word saying um, God raised him to himself. Well, you know, just he just picked him up and took him to heaven. That's how I understand it. I don't know why you are focusing on the significance of these words. The point is that that verse clearly says that Jesus didn't die on a cross and Christians should be happy. Should be happy that Jesus didn't die horribly after all. But those who are not happy will be deep down angry and frightened that their sins will not after all be forgiven and they might have to convert to Islam for that sort of thing, if they believe that sort of thing. No, it doesn't mean that God also meant manifests itself as Jesus Christ because 
both Judaism and Islam specifically deny that. They deny the divinity of Jesus. But then you want to have everything, every you know, the way you like it. And uh, I think it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. The whole thing is ridiculous, but obviously you're attached to your beliefs. You just want it to be Christianity because that's the religion of your ancestors and you don't want it to be the narrative of the religion of immigrants because you you rather despise them and that that that's really the reason that 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 is the cause of your distress that you got it wrong and they have the right book so the long and short of it of that um video which was one hour and 47 minutes long um is that at no point did, did Fatui say any of the things I said? And I think that is really the most important point for Dawa doing Muslims to put to Christians. You know, saying, well, you want, you want Jesus to have died for your sins, right? So you're just being a hypocrite when you say you love Jesus. And anyway, you, Jesus doesn't have to, didn't have to die for your sins because, well, it doesn't make sense in any way you can get to heaven through Islam. So, you know, what's your problem? Why do you have to believe in this ridiculous, absurd story or claim you believe it um, in order to get to heaven when you must know that it is idolatry? I mean, they have no answer to it, really. And the fact that they get upset is evidence of their confusion and the and their incoherent position. And that's all I have to say on the matter. Thank you for listening.